In this final little bit of work on fluid pressure, we're going to have a look at a sneaky little way that you can work out the force components on any shaped surface. So there's a couple of key words in that description I'm just going to highlight that the fluid pressure components, i.e. we get the X component and the Y component, but I'm not worried about the resultant pressure on there or the resultant force. And I'm not so worried about where the line of action is, although I could calculate it. And then on any shape surface, we'll talk about as we go along. So I'm gonna do this by way of an example. So imagine we have a sea wall that is at an angle. And we have the sea that's relatively static, so we can consider it to be hydrostatic. And the sea wall is at an angle, let's call that 60 degrees. And the mass density force salt water equals 1025 kilograms per meter cubed and I wish to know I'm oh, sorry that's 10 meters height of water and I wish to know what are the horizontal forces equivalent force and what is the vertical equivalent force on this section of sea wall so on this section of sea wall alone and it turns out there's a very easy way we can do this so for the horizontal section, all we need to do is consider the forces acting in the horizontal set, horizontal direction. So let's have a look at that. So we have the horizontal force. And what we have acting on this sea wall in the horizontal direction is a triangular distribution of loading going from zero to p at 10 meters worth and from this we can find the equivalent F, equivalent horizontal force acting on there and the area that we need to consider now is not the area that i've highlighted but actually an imaginary area that is 10 meters high and whatever the width is out of plane. As this is a sea wall, we can consider that the wall carries on for a long direction. So whenever we can encounter problems that carry on for a long distance in the out of plane direction, we generally consider what happens on a one meter section of this wall in isolation because every successive one meter section will behave exactly the same okay so using this now so we have let's draw it there so 10 meters and one meter we can and this is the area we can then calculate this equivalent horizontal force so f h is equal to the average pressure, which is P at 10 meters, minus P at 0 meters, and multiplied by 1 half, and then multiplied by the area. So that's equal to 1 half of rho G H, where H is 10 meters, multiplied by the area, and so we have 1 half multiply by 1025 multiply by 9.81 multiply by the height which is 10 meters and multiply by the area which is 10 meters by 1 meters which is 10 meters squared so let me just annotate that for you quickly so this is rho g h and a and that gets us for the equivalent horizontal force is 502.8 kilonewtons. And the important thing we did there was, as well as doing the hydrostatic pressure calculations, was recognising that we're only acting on this 
equivalent vertical area. So now we're going to proceed on to the vertical force. And here we're going to take a slightly different approach. If we imagine our seawall, we can imagine then that we have a triangular and let's whatever the free three dimensional version of triangular is section of water and if we can calculate the weight of this amount of water then we can quickly calculate fv the equivalent force in the vertical direction and probably the hardest part of this problem is that we need to work out because we're only given the angle as 60 degrees and the height of 10 meters is we need to work out one of the other dimensions of this triangle so I'm going to calculate this width here and I'm going to call this B and from geometry I can say that I can say that the tan of theta is equal to the height over the width and therefore B equals B equals H over tan of theta with theta was 60 degrees so from here we get B equals 10 over the tan of 60 degrees which equals 5.77 meters 5.77 so we now go on to calculate the total volume of the water of this triangular shape here so the volume is the area times the out of plane width so we have let's go for one half of the width times the height gives us the area of the triangle then multiplied by the out of plane width which is 1.0 in this case so that equals one half times 5.77 multiplied by 10 multiplied by the 1 and equals 28.87 meters cubed and now we have the volume we can calculate the weight so So the weight is equal to the mass density so that's kilograms per meter cubed multiplied by the volume meters cubed so that gets us kilograms so we then need to multiply again by g to get us to a weight in newtons or kilonewtons so we have one oh two five multiplied by the 28.87 meter cubed and multiplied by 9.81 and expecting this is going to come out with a large number let's divide by a thousand to get us into kilonewtons and we get the weight is 290.3 kilonewtons so our original problem was this and now we know that we have an equivalent horizontal force FH an equivalent vertical force FV we could if we wanted to go on to calculate the total equivalent force and possibly even work out where the line of action of this force is 
on there. But we're going to use this little trick for other problems in tutorials where we're not so worried about where this line of action is and where this prob where this trick really comes in handy and we'll see very soon is maybe we've got the same got a vertical wall horizontal wall and then we've got a curved section and we've got an equivalent height of water and now all I want to know is what is the equivalent horizontal and equivalent vertical forces on this curved section and maybe this curved section isn't circular maybe it's ellipsoid maybe it's a bit more random than that so we're not worried about the line of action but we are worried about this vertical and horizontal components and we'll go on to do that in the tutorial problems